I believe we can be more human if we accept more than one reality. In February 2015, something happened. It had a divisive impact on the world. People said it challenged their objective truth. Time magazine said it changed the course of internet history forever. I like to call it a fashion disagreement. <laughs> but there's something more important about this. We have a really hard time accepting that we experience the physical world differently. That if we can understand how we can see, hear, and feel the exact same information in the world in entirely different ways, we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity and chance to move away from all of the dehumanization that people talk about and rehumanize our interactions and the technologies we build and use to do this. Dr. Poppy Crum is the chief scientist at Dolby Laboratories and an adjunct professor at Stanford University. Her work focuses on the ways personalized technology will continue to shape us as humans. Dr. Crum focuses on personalized data and technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, AI and machine learning, and wearables. If I go play Call of Duty for 50 hours, I will see the world differently. I know that. I will actually fundamentally have increased sensitivity to contrast. I will have different ways of making predictions about information with regard to how analytic I am in an environment. I'm going to be better at processing a spatial scene with that's highly, you know, really busy. So when you start thinking about it that way, it's like, look, we are different creatures. We're going to be different creatures. But how do we think about that in a way that we are shaping us to be who we want to be? and not just on the field, but also as humans. Just looking at the statistics and dynamics of how we speak can predict schizophrenia, an onset of psychosis within five years, linguistic changes that can show up in Alzheimer's. And that can happen sometimes 10 years. You can see changes in people's linguistics 10 years before onset of clinical diagnosis. So by tracking statistical properties in someone's language, you're able to demonstrate an anticipatory way of intervening and helping an individual that they might not even realize needs to be tracked. We're going to evolve technologies, and those technologies will be proliferated around the world very quickly. But the differentiation, the capacity we have, and the thing that we really need to think about is how we enable our bodies and our brains to intersect with that evolution of technology. Because technology can create higher resolution than our brains can handle. But that doesn't mean our brains can't get there. So it's that constant loop of how we evolve with our technology that's going to be really important.